Jack and Jill went down uh, up the hill, hill, then they like died and like. <laughs> no, no. Ideas are like farts. If you have to force them, then they're probably shit. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. I've heard that before. Hello everyone, uh, this is Carissa Ong at, for Pen Wings Podcast. This is the first episode, so I'm so excited. Uh, hopefully we can do this frequently if this goes well. So today I have two very special guests with me, Zach Shah and also Terence. So a little background on, also on myself actually, if you have not met me. I am the author of the best-selling Midnight Monologues and Daylight Dialogues. And I'm also my own publisher. And uh, lucky fact, I publish Zach Shah, uh, who is also currently a bestseller for his book, More Than Words, that got published this year. Yay! <laughs> and also Terence. Terence has a really long, uh, oh, a very <laughs> extensive biography. You can condense it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Terence uh, is a journalist, and I actually met him in one of the uh, interviews that he did with me, right, early on for my book. And not only that, he's also a musical guru. Uh, so he has written uh, The Working Dead, uh, that was on K at Calpac, right? Mm -hmm. and, also, and it took two years for you to write that. Yeah. Right? And an author and a playwright. So that is really, really awesome. So this is going to be a very casual uh, conversation about uh, a couple of deep issues. So the tagline for this <laughs> podcast, and it's still a working title, is that this podcast takes you deep. Okay. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm still working on it, but uh, basically we're just going to talk about very, very uh, important issues. And uh, yeah, that's it. So <clears throat> the, to the issue that we are going to be discussing today basically is about the coping mechanisms of individuals in the creative industry. I know it sounds like super boring, and <laughs> super uh, deep, but uh, let's have a little chat with uh, Zach first and like see where he comes from because both of oh. all three of us are like creatives right so unfortunately unfortunately <laughs> yeah so we're just going to deep dive and see uh, you know what makes us tick and like how uh, we react to you know environmental situations okay so uh, first question uh, to Zach how did you get published um, with you? Yeah, with me. <laughs> this is so funny. Obviously, I know I published you, but yeah, just for the sake of the viewers. Like, how TMI do you want me to go? Yeah, just go ape shit. So, I, I think, uh, okay, um, you published me in 2019, so that was, okay, so in 2017, so yeah, I had to wait two years, um, which is, <laughs> uh, which is great. Yeah, waiting is my favorite thing to do. You could have uh, written a musical in those two years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, there are procedures, of course. Like you can't rush into these things, and you were already like signed to a couple of other um, um, authors. So I was actually at a, a Malay wedding. Like I didn't know who it was. I was just following my mom um, because there was food, and I was like, "Yep, <laughs> my favorite <laughs> thing." That's the only reason why. Yeah, reason yeah. and I was anything. like, I was so bored. I was like doing research on my phone, and I was like, "Okay, like, you know, it's, it's time to do something to like, like send this." Manuscript like to someone like you know the, the 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 first book you you sent out failed so it's like it's time for a second chance so I was like looking at Malaysia like yeah you would expect to Google search Malaysian publishers so I I actually found Pen Publishing on Twitter Twitter yeah I don't have a Twitter oh my god 2017 you didn't have a Twitter should I report it was well, <laughs> someone someone is pretending to be you? Oh my no no no! I, 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 uh, it wasn't. What it wasn't your account. It was like someone was like, "Oh my god, you should read this um, book by Carissa Ong, published by Penwings Publishing." Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like oh, a hashtag, okay. not really your account, I think. Okay, I okay, okay. So I sent it to you <laughs> during that uh, when I was like eating the manuscript. Yeah, and you like replied immediately. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like. <gasps> oh my god. Yeah, I, I I did reply pretty fast because like when I saw his manuscript, oh. right, it was. It's really good. Like because I go through uh, like manuscripts every week, like mm. about two or three manuscripts every week. When I read the first few pages, and also like, I go, I jump to the middle and the, and, the, and the end. If I it's not really numb, yeah. then I will just yeah. kind of you know. Yeah, you've got a lot of other things to do. Also, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, yeah. But the moment I saw his uh, stuff, it kind of reminds me a bit of my stuff also, mm. which I put out. So that's why I, I replied him quite quickly. Usually I take about a few days to you know really. You know, give deliberate. the yeah, 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 deliberate and give the benefit of doubt uh, whether the, the manuscript really 
make sense to get published because I, I kind of look at the commercial value and all these other things that goes along with it. And also the market, the target audience, right, that ah, yes. would buy the book. So after that? Um, so after that, um, yeah, uh, you asked me to like polish my stuff and like... Um, polish your stuff? Yeah, actually it's very uneventful because like um, the, the waiting period. So I actually didn't do much within that two year period except for like work on my second manuscript and third manuscript because that's the thing about poetry right like you don't write a poetry book like you accumulate poems like it's throughout true. time and because like I mean unless you're like unless you're like Leng Yef, you know who's like signed to a big publisher and she yeah. has to like put out a book every year so yeah, like, like a full time job yeah so. so she is like a working poet like she's like um, committed to a, a publishing house so like I guess in her case like she has to like write a poetry book like deliberately write a poetry book yeah. which is why I actually I actually did I, I actually enjoyed her earlier works because they felt more authentic yeah it's true I totally yeah. agree with that the like, recent ones there are some gems I love the I love the actual like, poems instead of like the prose like you see those have those the her later works those are more I feel like they're more committed. concentrated. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it. like a cliche, like copy paste from her earlier books, which, which <laughs> I don't blame her. Oh, which, oh, I don't, controversial <laughs> which I don't blame her for. Yeah. <laughs> which I certainly don't blame her for. Like, yeah. when you're involved in like the corporate, like, uh, basically this, you become a product, right? Yeah. So that would kind of, you know, yeah. affect your quality of work. So that will be some of the questions that we will bring up later, right? Yeah. Like, how uh, is the industry like? You know, forming your your the end product of your work, like it depends. It really depends. Yeah, I I and don't. Frequency also. I don't want to. I want to think she's enjoying her work, but I feel like the pressure and stress of like, you know, like putting out book after book after book has yeah. to be exhausting, mm -hmm. even if yeah. you like enjoy it. Um, In the end, it's still like e-commerce. I mean, it's like commerce, yeah. right? Then Consumerism. it becomes like a routine, like something you do to. For sales instead exactly. of because you Imagine you have to write a playwright like every month. Oh my goodness, <laughs> good luck, yeah. Yeah, yeah because it me. reminds me a bit because I was watching YouTube like a few months ago yeah. and they were talking about this conspiracy, right? Oh, oh. oh wow, okay. <laughs> about the K-pop world. Like, oh, this yeah. basically about slave contracts. Oh yeah, Have you exactly. heard about that? Yeah, totally. Like, they get minimum pay and they, they like, um, they uh, pour out all of themselves into this work. Yeah, apparently they uh, they would train under these companies, and then uh, they were actually hours a day or something. yeah yeah it's crazy, and they will pile up a, a bunch of debt, which they would then pay back to the to the company after they have uh, debuted or like be successful. So they don't really earn that much indentured servitude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. So that really does, uh, and also they have to go undergo surgery and all this kind of yeah. thing. So yeah. you you're basically a product yeah. to be marketed, and then just for a, a limited amount of time, and then after that you're taken off the market, and you really kind of maybe just don't do anything. I else. mean, in in yeah. Korea you have to go for NS, so you yeah. have to be taken off the market because uh, yeah, that's why. No matter how powerful the music industry is, they can't like overrule the government because yeah. it the government says yeah. no. You have to go to national service. Like yeah, yeah. So that's when they. So and then after that, you know, they don't have a degree. Like most of these yeah. kids are fresh out of school. Like and then they go straight into the K-pop industry, and then there's like nothing left for them after. Yeah, like I think we can just totally jump into that that question about uh, basically that kind of uh, yeah. way of working, right? Yeah. And how it affects mm. like the mental health of these. K-pop stars like recently, uh, there was a suicide by oh an FX God. member. Have you heard about yeah, that? Yeah, that's ugh, yeah. Terrible. So I mean, I don't even like watch or enjoy K-pop. Oh my God, don't come for me, K-pop stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it, it was really, really interesting about uh, yeah. Like it popped up in my social media feed, so it must be a big thing, right? It is, it is, because I actually found this uh, particular status on my Facebook that mm. my friend posted. So. Her name was uh, is Michelle, so she said something about along the lines where the result of suicide, right? Mm -hmm. About how she doesn't want to encourage anyone saying Sully is free from her pain and now is happy, because her pain has now spread. So many people are in pain now because of this, and I also don't want to think of uh, quoting her, and I also don't want to think of how some suicidal people right now will think that their pain will be gone too if they go the same path. Mm -hmm. So she, she says in a way that uh, the way people are dealing with these kind of situations is just uh, 
they're taking death as like a, a, a way out, yeah. right? So I think that's totally wrong. So uh, that's why we have this podcast as well to kind of address, yeah. <laughs> kind of address like what is like the real like approach to to all of this, uh, you know. Terrorism. You know, it's funny we're talking about my population journey. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. Segway straight into. I'm sorry, I did not mean to segue that far into the. Yeah, I know. A very right? dark segue. Yeah, yeah. So. that is that is creative. The purpose of the yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. creative, right? But the thing is, it's also it's the same, right? Of, of how to keep your mental health while you are actually writing a lot of depressing things. Uh, like for your uh, working day, you're just talking about uh, purpose of, purpose in life of, yes. uh, of not yeah. like working until you're dying kind of mm-hmm. thing. So not the happiest stuff. That's yeah, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. there are some questions here. Uh, also, yeah, about how pain helped you guys in writing, mm-hmm. uh, and how uh, what what are the examples of because uh, pain is like. Quite relative. You have like sadness. You have like meaninglessness, and like what is the main theme that you always uh, go back to when you start writing? You want to go first? Yeah, <laughs> oh, I feel like okay. I've been talking wow. for a long time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, for me, I feel that you know, in the the essence. Um, I mean, okay. Um, I tend to write uh, stories. I mean, like uh, these two are like poets here. I don't know how they do it. You know, poetry is a. Uh, amazing and magical and something that I have yet to <laughs> try but yeah so I usually tend to write prose yeah. as in like you know either plays or stories and you know I think mostly what drives plays and stories is conflict basically yeah. you need you can't have a story where happy, everyone is happy, happy I mean well happy endings you can I mean I guess but there needs something like there needs to be some sort of trouble, Sacrifice. some sort of uh, like drama. No, no one is going to read a story where it's just happy all the time. You know, may, may, okay, maybe if you're like a kid, maybe lah. But usually, yeah. you know, but most stories fairy tales about conflict. have like conflict. Like, yes, like exactly. The queen poisons um, Snow White. Snow White, yeah. or like you know, Sleeping Beauty falls yeah. asleep, or Cinderella can't go to I the ball. I think ball. like conflict is ingrained in our brains ever since we were children. Like, yeah, yeah. In yeah, fairy tales. <laughs> exactly. Like, even the nursery rhymes, like you know. Um, um, Jack and Jill went down uh, up the hill, then they like died and like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's like, not how I remember it, but yeah. yeah. But I think that was based on like a, a real thing where like a, a king or something, they oh, had yeah. guillotined. Yeah. yeah, and then their heads just start Some tumbling down the hill. Some of these nursery rhymes are like, you know, and they're listen, yeah, they're like, why am I telling my kid this? It's like, you know, rock a bye baby, and then down will come baby, cradle and all. It's yeah, like, oh yeah. my. They always yeah. have like, a, I don't know, a more like sadder background to why yeah, it was. like a dark reason, background. For some reason, like, ch- children are singing it. I have no idea why, yeah. but yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Cool. Yeah. Well, about your pain, what what do My you pain. do? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Do we have Do we have time for that? Yeah. <laughs> of course. Uh, we need to see my therapist for that. Just kidding. I didn't have a therapist. Um, expensive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my pain. Okay. Um. So let's just put it out there. I was bullied a lot in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, was I? Uh, yeah, in high school. Yeah. But it uh, it wasn't so bad in primary school, like because I still had friends back then, so they were like a support system. Oh yeah. So when I um starts um started um. High school, uh, secondary school, um, like I didn't know anyone, and I was like in this very emo mood. Like I don't know why, it must be hormones or something. So um, like I didn't want to be friends with anyone, and I was like, you know, I was I was like the freak in high school because um, I mean I didn't know why um, back then. I didn't know why. So um, I was made. I guess I know now. Uh, what? Um, <laughs> what do you know now? <laughs> oh, it's the grown up already. Uh, yeah. Um, so like. Um, the teasing and the like the psychological um uh, what was that psychological implications uh, of the yeah, teasing yeah the, the the psychological abuse and everything so uh, that's that was when I really turned to books and I remember like um, because my library was like really really bad uh, and the school library was like really really bad so they, they didn't have much selection so the first books that I read was like Chicken Soup for the Soul. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, yeah. hard really long time ago. Yeah. yeah. So um, actually, that actually got in, got me into poetry. Like you know, I I enjoyed the poetry. I found that you know the rhymes for some reason was like was like clicking something in my brain. It feels like a bit um, olden. You know what's it called? It's just mm-hmm. it's just there. You know, Classic. It's, it's, it feels magical uh, like, for uh, some reason. That's why I, I I rhyme also because it, it feels like everything just falls into place. But you know why I rhyme because. Um, I like to think of it like, um, like, like, because my life is so filled with like um, chaos and like conflict, uh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, internal yeah, exactly. and and external. Like when I when I rhyme, so happy you said that. Like everything, like 
like falls a, in a place. Yeah, like a jigsaw puzzle. Like everything, I think that's a bit like um, obsessive compulsive. Like I'm not sure if that's something that should be diagnosed by a professional. <laughs> mm. But you know, as far as coping mechanisms go, I think it's pretty healthy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because like a lot of people nowadays, they just don't know like, how to handle they like yeah. their external and internal conflicts. Because uh, like yesterday, I had dinner uh, with one of my ex colleagues, and he he mentioned that he didn't need to go to therapy anymore because. Yeah, I know, right? Because of uh, this particular uh, statement that the therapist said to him. So, his whole uh, year of going to therapy is basically just, uh, he as a person, he loves conflict, right? Oh yeah, but the thing is, he didn't have enough external conflict, mm -hmm. so he kind of looked internally to, to actually find conflict there. So that's why where all the trouble uh, uh. comes. So a lot of people don't know how to define uh, you know, what yeah. type of conflict they really need. And you're friends with this person? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, I'm friends with a lot of weird people. Mm -hmm. yeah. but it's actually, it's, it's true actually what you said, because yeah, so, someone told me that, you know, um, a lot of us actually, we, we don't admit it, but human beings, we're sort of ad addicted to drama and to challenge, basically. Yeah. You, you know, it's like, like in our lives, if everything is going smooth and you know that would everything, be like dystopian. yeah, then it becomes <laughs> like you become bored basically. You want you want to move on to another challenge or something. That's why. Like but heaven. yeah, so the challenge is actually you know finding the drama fix in a healthy way basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like Something that doesn't have like, you know, insane repercussions if you... <laughs> yeah, that's why a lot of, you know, these dramas, you know, they're very popular because we like to, you know, then we can watch it and we can live vicariously through it and wow. all that. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, like yeah. speaking of living vicariously, like, like going back to the topic of pain, like um, my my issue in life is actually self-esteem or rather self-criticism. Whoa, that's mine. That's like a huge <laughs> thing in mine too. Like, um, <laughs> like even now, like looking in the mirror, like even now, it's like, it's like kind of um, uh, well, how how do you explain it? Very um, challenging. Yeah, I mean, you're just not happy whatever you're looking at. You know, yeah, that's it. So not satisfied. Like e even like like when I'm like trying to sleep, like all the thoughts come into like you know all, all <laughs> yeah. my failures. But it's yeah, always when you're yeah. trying to sleep, right? Yeah, in the middle exactly. of the night, so like suddenly they just come and, all at yeah, once. Yeah, and like I keep comparing my progress, mm. my achievements to other people. Like you know, Carissa yeah. is like only two years older oh. than me. Yeah, and has she a, has a, career, she has a publishing career. empire. And I'm I I wasted two years of my life working at an IT job that I hated to you know. <laughs> I, 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 I like the working there. <laughs> yeah, oh wow. The the, the, the excuse I give myself to people is that oh I'm saving money to uh, afford my degree when actually I can I can just I think the student loans could have like I could have just survived on student loans mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so actually like I was actually already like um, addicted to having my own salary like you know the independence I was I was hooked up on the independence which is a weird thing to be like addicted to yeah. so it was uh, an after like one and a half years I was like oh my god is this gonna be my life and I was like no so I had, yeah. I had to change but even now, like yeah, people saying, "Oh, Zach, you're doing amazing! Like you're, <laughs> you're, you're going back to school. You're like oh you're my a best-selling yeah. author. Wow. I was like, Girl, I'm only in my second semester. Everyone is like two, three years younger than me, and I keep telling people that I'm 23 in the class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they believe it, you know, because you know, Asian don't reason. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so like um, the self, the self criticism, like even like even now, it's it's kind of it's really bad, and like I'm trying like one of the process of healing. To me, it's like understanding that um, perfection is like it is unachievable. Unattainable, yes. Yeah, because it, it, it's also like when you do produce something, it's uh, a, a very nice balance of actually having enough self criticism and like not having too much. But can right. I just say, yeah. I I I find perfection in poetry, like yeah. in a world that is, it's like chaos, chaos and like <laughs> um, disorder. Like my 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 heaven is poetry. Yeah. Like I can arrange words and I can say, oh my god, I did that. Like me, like I'm like even though like I'm like a bundle of chaos and like <laughs> conflict and like depression and sadness and pain, like um like you know pain can create beautiful things. Like I'm not trying yeah, to say yeah, that definitely. pain is good, but you know, you shouldn't look for pain if, if your your life is already like relatively normal, but you know <laughs> I'm just trying to look at the bright side. Yeah. It's like if you really want to write good yeah. stuff, you gotta, you know, go through mm -hmm. some like heavy mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> well, yeah, in some way. Yeah. yeah. Because even for me also about uh, you know, comparing myself yeah, to yeah. other people. And I do that all the time. Which is I but the thing is I'm also self aware that that is not healthy mm -hmm. uh, at some points. So 
I would do that at, to a certain extent, but I will stop myself when I mm. just feel like I'm just really sad. Because I think if I would to go through like depression, which yeah. I think I did like a couple of years back, uh, all I did was just compare myself to like people that are already there. And mm. people are telling me yes, or otherwise that, oh girl, you like you have articles or whatever written <laughs> about you and all that nonsense. So <clears throat> getting uh, that right of mind and also just having true self-acceptance and, mm-hmm. and just understanding that you are always on your own yeah. trajectory uh, and also uh, basically as long as you're you know doing something doing something <laughs> exactly, that, that improves yeah. yourself yeah. in your own trajectory that's fine mm-hmm. because it's, it's I think it's just I guess social yeah. media and all that that just yeah. gives you like a super convenient way to compare because you have like analy- you have data that like in, yeah. it's put out in numbers right mm-hmm. which provides you a direct comparison yeah. of like how well you're doing so there's the thing yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like horrible. everything is numbers now like you're following how yeah. many likes how many how followers many likes, how many, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but i mean the, the, the thing you know why it's bad is because you know if you keep you know this whole comparing yourself with something because it will never end basically yeah, it will you know never, ever end. yeah you compare yourself to this person then we work 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 to get to that level there'll be another person yeah higher, exactly. and then it, it will never stop there'll you always know? be that one asian kid like yeah exactly <laughs> some <laughs> kid somewhere who spends like 20 hours a day practicing you know what I, I, I don't want to i don't want to proper i don't want to propagate hurtful stereotypes like you know Malay, malays are lazy but i <laughs> I, oh, oh, I think oh. i think we are because i like for me i am lazy but you know what keep what um, helps me get up in the morning the fear of failure yeah that, that fuels me and i know that is also healthy it is also unhealthy because <laughs> like you shouldn't be afraid of failing like you know failure you like try, helps right? you grow yeah, yeah. um but yeah that's but in that yeah. case i think it's also bad because you're taking that negative yeah. thing but you're making it into a positive yeah. thing because it spurs you to yeah. create stuff so it's true that's actually but, you know but that's, it that's also good, like actually. compounds the stress i yeah but yeah, you know i think i think so. at this point in my life like after so many like you know the stressful uh, two-year job i had in the it industry mm-hmm. and now assignments and group assignments my god yeah, um, yeah. assignments like i think at this point like even I, I have, I am unable to relax. Like I can, like, like okay, Zach, <laughs> you need to take the weekend off. You need to relax. You, and just, just even lying in bed, I panic. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm addicted to stress. Like I need stress pumping through my blood <laughs> to feel normal. I mean, yeah, yeah, because you're so just so used to it, right? And, and yeah. the thing is, it's the only thing that makes you move. And I don't yeah. even drink coffee. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I can't drink coffee at all. Like, okay, I love coffee, so I don't yeah. know you guys. I don't know. Like, like, yeah. I only can drink tea. I need just. For me, mm. I just need to calm down all the time. I mean, I totally understand uh, yeah, yeah. that. It's yeah. Just... No, I mean, it, it's good, you know, I mean, because, yeah, let, let's be honest, a lot of us, you know, we work better with deadlines and stress and all that because they push us forward. But the danger is if it pushes us so forward that you start, you don't have yeah. time for yourself, you burn out. Yeah. Exactly. And then that becomes, you, you, that's the most dangerous thing. You go off the cliff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Burning and out. it's very common, actually. Yeah. It happened to me a long time ago. Oh, wow. What about that? Yeah, no, like, it was like, I think I, I was working on several projects at, at the time. I think, yeah, like, I, it's like I wanted to get this published. Because, like, I do short stories as well as plays. So, at the same time, I was like, you know, all oh, this short story was due. Then, like, this play. And then, after all, I just, I, I think one or two months, I just said, stop. I'm not going to do anything at all. Yeah, and just I just took a break. Yeah, I just took a break. Because it wasn't fun anymore. It was killing me. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, so that's why it's really important to, like, at least have a day of break. Like, for me... I'm working like six days a week, but at least I, on a, every Saturday I am a nothing. Uh, like I wanna do nothing day. Yeah. So okay. So since we're talking about doing nothing, let's take a break uh, for about five minutes, and then we'll I love jump that back. Segue. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Everything. <laughs> doing nothing is yeah, the best. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hello. Again. <laughs> oh my god, that was terrible. But yeah, we're back on break and. Yeah, let's continue with like some of the questions that we have actually from the readers. So this question is actually from Shane from Instagram. Uh, so she wants to ask you guys about writer's block. How do you kind of you know overcome that uh, when it comes to you? What do you start? Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah, like I've yeah, been yeah, talking yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah because uh, some, someone actually sort of uh, told me something very interesting once that you know writer's block comes from perfectionism. Mm-hmm. Basically, that yes. the reason you don't want to write something because really you're scared this. that it's going to turn out bad or you know it's going to turn out um, not up to your standards or difficult or something. So the best way to do that is just yeah. to relax. Basically, you know, take your mind off it. Don't force 
something yeah. lah basically. Not I mean, like their definition actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like... I mean, <laughs> there's a saying. Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh yeah. It's a bit of a vulgar saying, but he said like you know, ideas are like farts. If you have to force them, then you're probably shit. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm sorry. I've said that before. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I'm I love sorry, that. That is yeah, going. Yeah. That is going into the podcast. So say, sometimes you know you just uh, yeah you relax you you go off and you do something else you relax your mind you think of other things and sometimes the idea will come to you without it realizing. Yeah. 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 Okay. What about you? Zach? Yeah. Um. I actually remembered um reading um, Big Magic by uh, what's her name the writer of Eat Pray Love. Uh, I Elizabeth know. Gilbert. Elizabeth oh, wow, Gilbert. Okay. Thank you so much. Gosh, he is a walking like <laughs> encyclopedia. Oh, so, yeah. Um, like, yeah, she makes a very like I know it's like a subjective interpretation of the concept of inspiration. Like she says, um, inspiration is alive. Like it's like out there in like the atmosphere, looking for a vessel. Because she said something about her experience. She was w- working on this book, right? Yeah. And she had an amazing idea. I didn't remember. I didn't remember um, what it was. It was like a period piece. So um, she had other things going on in her life at at the time. So she had to abandon that project. Mm-hmm. Later, two years, she met a new friend. Yeah. And her friend, this friend, was working on something almost similar to what she was doing. Okay. Like almost like like to the letter. Oh wow. So she 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 asked um what are, there are some differences between their work but it was basically the same period piece like different uh, different uh, same characters but different names. Yeah. Same place but different different cities or something like that. And then uh, it it got her thinking like oh my god like inspiration is alive like if you leave it too long it'll go look for someone else. Oh wow, oh, that wow. is really yeah. nice. I so, mean like yeah, yeah. Uh, I the book was like oh my god like where has this book been all my life like I didn't I'm I I still haven't finished reading the book because of like, assignments like you know student life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I was like you know that's that's the 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 thing that I I have never experienced that before, but like. I get it. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. That that that's the thing. Like when you're like writing, right? Like when you try to force out an idea, like yeah, like Karen yeah. so eloquently put it. Um, oh, yes. Like it it doesn't come to because the inspiration doesn't want you. Yeah. Like true. like like I know it's it's like pseudo science or like metaphysics or whatever. But like you know it kind of makes sense. Like when you try to force an idea out, like and it doesn't come, like maybe you should Again, just abandon. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, yeah. I know. You said just go with it, but like if if I try to write a poem about something, like and it's just not happening, I was like, girl, bye. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, other things. Yeah, 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 like girl, maybe you're not for me. And you know, the inspiration will find someone better who can interpret it, like to give it mm-hmm. life. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, that's why a lot of poets they do talk about the same thing, which is generally yeah. love. But it's yeah. just in different kind of aspects. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or you know, um, one one other concept that um, uh, um, Elizabeth Gilbert said also in yeah. her book is that the inspiration can have many lovers. Mm-hmm. She can have many affairs throughout her life. So that's why oh, wow. you that's why you <laughs> see many works of art that are similar. Yeah. Because yeah. one inspiration can have like many children. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yeah, and yeah. it's like. Oh, it's like so, like so. It's kind cute. of profound, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. When you write things, you don't really expect to be like super original, cause like, yeah. you just you just not like nothing is really truly original. That's like, true. Like when you come yeah. out, with something. it's like the inspiration is like yeah. you know, um, reproducing and like the children of inspirations of of the past inspirations are yeah. like finding new creatives mm-hmm. to give them life, and I was like, that's why, yeah. like. Um, like creative works are like you know repetitive in a way, but different also in a yeah, sense. Yeah, exactly. It's the execution yes. how you do things. Yeah, I it's mean, true. Two works can have a very same premise, but it's how you you know interpret like it, you yeah. interpret it, how you put it down, how you execute it. So like going difference. back to like how I deal with writer's block, like again, like I said, um, if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Like yeah. Um, but other times, like if I, I'm patient. Like sometimes the inspiration is very stubborn. Like I tried to persuade it, like come on, come on, please, <laughs> please, <laughs> please give yeah. me this. It's a good idea. Like yeah, I'll 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 prove. Sometimes you have to prove to yourself, like to the inspiration, like I am I worthy of you, like you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Am I willing to sacrifice my time and my and my and my and my sleep, to to bring you out into the world? 
and it's like you know some sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't yeah like to add to that like sometimes i feel like maybe the idea is good it's just it's not the right time for, for you, you to write it's true it. yeah, yeah. yeah so know? sometimes i'll just keep keywords in my yeah. notes and then i'll just kind of just dump it there for a, mm-hmm. a bit and then i would come back to it uh, after a couple of days and i would just like actually have an idea on how yeah. to yeah. work on that thing because yeah if i do try to like force it out it just comes out yeah. terrible like, like i could mm-hmm. see that's terrible and i would know that it's terrible mm-hmm. so i just be super yeah. regretful but you know s- you know sometimes um like l- um, like you said sometimes you wanted to create a poem but you end up creating a prose you yeah know, exactly. it's not really like a poem but like a, a paragraph yeah you know? exactly it doesn't so, rhyme and all those kind of things yeah sometimes um you're looking at it the wrong way like yeah yeah, yeah. Like it's it's happened to me several times before. Like again, you know, since I write stories, like sometimes I will have this great idea and I don't know how to end it. I'm like, okay, that's great. This the character should do that, but I don't know what to do. So what I sometimes I just I put it away for a while and I'll say maybe later. And it has happened that you know later on in life I'm doing yeah. and something happens. So I'm like, oh wait, you know that would actually be the perfect ending for the thing. So the idea was good. It's just that it wasn't the right time yet and yeah. until I had that experience to you know. Yeah. Can I actually share something with you guys? Sure. It's yeah. funny thing because I was going through my Facebook this morning and this quote came out that I posted on 2013. I'm not sure who it's from. <laughs> I just copied and pasted it from the internet. Okay, here it is. The internet. <laughs> I'm sure it's I'm sure it's from a philosopher, but I'm not sure who it is. Uh, I have to Google that. So okay. It's probably Albert Einstein or like. Okay, uh, it's long. Been... It's long. Uh, get Oscar ready. Wilde. It's always okay. Busy. Oscar the truly Wilde. creative mind is any field in any field is no more than this: a human creature born abnormally, inhumanly sensitive. To him, a touch is a blow, a sound is a noise, a misfortune is a tragedy, a joy is an ecstasy, a friend is a lover, a lover is a god, and failure is death. Wow. Add to this cruelly delicate organism the overpowering necessity to create, create, create. So that without the creating of music or poetry or books or buildings or something of meaning, his breath is cut off from him. He must create, must pour out creation by some strange unknown inward urgency. He is not really alive unless he is creating. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, I need to find who wrote this. Yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing. Very nicely put. Yeah, yeah so, very nice. I think the thing is also about creating, right? And also like putting stuff uh, in that icebox kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it's also a lot of writers right now, they struggle with coming back to that uh, piece that they were supposed to write. Mm. So, so many distractions. Yeah, so many exactly, obligations. Yeah. exactly. So that's probably one of the, the main uh, I don't know, problems that people have actually with writer's block also. Yeah. It's not the, just the point that you want to write, but it's like when you do have an idea, but you just kind of keep it back uh, over there. I think it, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it just happens to every single writer. Like, yeah. they have that Life point. gets in yeah. the way, yeah. something happens. Yeah, like, like I, I don't want to admit this, but I think I have to. Like, I haven't written for like weeks, like months maybe even. Like the last poem I wrote was probably in like, op- like August. Yeah, um, I think it's just again about yeah. consistency. That's why my Instagram yeah. is so empty. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to keep like posting <laughs> stuff from my book because then it'll be too many spoilers, but like, yeah. I don't but have you know, any original yeah. material. The funny thing is like, even though you think about it, there's always this little urge within yeah. you to, you know? The like, little yeah. guilt, like, oh my yeah, god, you're, like, you're a piece of shit. I really should be right now, I really should. But <laughs> I'm just going to see this YouTube video like, first, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing also, like, we keep looking at our phones, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, right. Yeah. But I write with my phone anyway, so. It's true, yeah. Yeah. I always such a millennial poet, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't use notebooks. I write on my phone. Ah, <laughs> yeah. When I mean, I was, most things are yeah, when I was younger, I used to write everything longhand. You know, there was yeah, oh, wow. yeah. But you know what's yeah. my problem with writing by hand mm-hmm. stuff? I can't read my own handwriting afterwards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could be a yeah. doctor as well as a poet, Chicken maybe. Scratch. Yeah. Yeah, you just be messed up with like yeah, a like, bunch yeah. of dude. Yeah. Like I wrote a good poem. That. What is this? I can't read it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now it's pretty. Like look at like a lexicon like. I translate it, oh my god. So now you have a double layer of yeah. interpreting your poem. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Next, next question, I think. Right Let's now. have another question. Um, earlier on uh, in the podcast, we were talking about the quality of work, right? Uh, from Lang Lev, when you notice that her yep. books are kind of getting a bit more like at a commercial yeah. and like, mm-hmm. doesn't, you don't really feel it from her heart anymore. So have you actually um, experienced that uh, as, we go mainstream right now because right now you are currently a bestseller right and yeah. also you have your own playwrights so how does that does that affect you in any way like the feedback that you get uh, from let's say readers and all that do you think that it will kind of like merge like morph your your the way you write I mean <laughs> well I, I mean, mean yeah you know you're only human right so of course yeah. you know when you hear what people have to say about your work 
I think you know you will be sort of inflated. Not, yeah, I mean, Influence. if it's good, of course. Yeah, yeah, you will be sort of influenced maybe in some ways, but yeah. I mean, the goal is to don't let it go too much to heart, lah. Basically, exactly. because there's yeah. always a balance between like, because right now when you write, you you write to express yourself and to, yes, to yes. you know find a, a heaven, a haven, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, if you do go commercial, uh, mm-hmm. there are certain expectations that yeah. is, that's put on you mm-hmm. to actually come out with a, a product or let's say a piece mm-hmm. that you may not necessarily like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, have you ever had that? Encounter? I mean, I think um, right now we see so mu- so many like oh empowering oh feminism like I am a goddess type poetry you know yeah. where like um, you you don't really like like I, I don't think I'm a mainstream oh, sorry I don't think I'm mainstream <laughs> yet I keep touching my audio the guy said not to touch my audio <laughs> um, like I don't think I'm at that point in my career yet yet like I I can still like Play explore around, like, yeah, yeah explore like I don't think I. I write for people, not yes. not that much. I still write for myself because mm-hmm. I still have like two manuscripts that I wrote like um, uh, after um, more than words. Okay. I mean, during that two years, while well, I was waiting for for the for for you to give the green light. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, uh, but you know, back then, like really back then, when I started, when I was like um, eighteen, when yeah. I just was experimenting with um, poetry. Um, yeah, my stuff was like really, um, I don't want to say dark or like um, uh, disturbing, <laughs> but yeah. that's that's probably what other people would think where, if they read. So it's like, you know, after I like mellowed out my style, like, you know, uh, actually I before I met uh, Lang, I, I uh, found this book uh, by Sharil Nizam. I'm not sure if you guys know him. Mm-hmm. Um, he does artwork now for um, Bernice. Bernice. Yeah. Um, Bernice Chorley, Chorley yeah. um, and uh, Sharon Baker mm-hmm. uh, for the, if you can see his artwork is very eccentric and he only wrote one book in his life I can't find where he is what's he doing now he's very underground but his book um, If Only mm-hmm. was um, sort of what um, made me fall in love with poetry again because yeah. back then uh, poetry was like something um, like what I would do to like get the stuff out of me yeah. instead of like turning it into something beautiful. I mean, that's the thing. That's how I changed. Yeah. Poetry back then was like how people would cut themselves or like how people would drink, turn to alcohol. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. very self-harming in a way. Yeah, yeah, it is because I, did, I do get messages on my Instagram at times yeah. where people do get, they do have suicidal Sanyang. thoughts mm. and then they do yeah. tell me about their divorce yeah. and their depression oh, and wow. all this kind of thing. I think, I think it's, not, it's not really good yeah. to translate what you feel on paper like exactly how you feel because exactly. then it will compound your sadness instead how mm-hmm. i change my um my my Approach, my yeah. pain into like in, in, into something beautiful and that is how i sublimate the yeah the i think that's a really good uh, way to kind of channel that because a lot of manuscripts that i receive are very literal ah, like yes, yes. i want to just die <laughs> yeah. it's it's ter- it's not to say so it's, it's very rupee core then yeah, yeah. <laughs> i guess so <laughs> yeah. so it's just very literal and then mm-hmm. um, you don't really get a lot of mystery and you don't get the magic out of that right mm-hmm. so that's what that's how i always feed back to the, uh, some of the people that want to like publish yeah commercially mm-hmm. And also because I think it's the that goes to the other question about responsibilities yes. towards mm-hmm. the market that you are sending your work out to. Yes. Because people are easily swayed by whatever they read exactly. or mm-hmm. uh, anything that they see, basically. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of, uh, if you do want to go commercial, that's a, definitely... I mean, I'm you easily influenced read. by I read, yeah. so yeah, I can yeah. understand that. You definitely have to change the way you write because it would definitely have like a neck you just see the consequences like, of, your, of your pieces right if it's mm-hmm. going to cause like i don't know a, a upheaval like a, a steady increase of depression after reading your book that's terrible yeah. right so uh, i like the, the point that you made about how taking the pain and then also kind of just translating it into something beautiful that's why a lot of people say my my work is bittersweet because mm-hmm. i always start with a very depressing uh beginning and i always end it with like something Happy. hopeful yes, at least yeah. hopeful la. Because I being happy also it's kind of like scary, yeah. right? Like did you watch Joker recently? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, my friend spoiled yeah, it for me. Oh my god! <laughs> but but I wasn't gonna watch movie. it on 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 yeah. film anyway. What do you think yeah. about uh, that movie? Because there's a lot of mixed. No spoilers. <laughs> 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, no spoilers. Spoiler-free yeah, zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. spoiler-free zone. But just I guess your thoughts about like 
having this kind of movie out and having so like bipolar, not bipolar, but like have a lot of polar uh, opposites, opposites of uh, opinions from people, oh, right? Yeah. Then people are saying that it's really, really amazing and that should they, every single human this earth should watch it. And then yeah. there are some people like, oh, my children shouldn't watch it. Uh, kind of thing. I mean, you shouldn't let your children yeah. watch that movie. <laughs> yeah, first no, of all. I mean, maybe no, not, no, yeah, that's maybe not children, but like, oh, you just it's boring kind of yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. So. What is your take on like this movie in particular? Well, I mean, for me, I quite enjoyed this movie actually. I mean, I, I enjoyed it in the sense that I mean, I thought the cinematography was great. And yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is amazing, yeah. like, He should get an Oscar. There. He right? should actually. He, he I should think totally he should. Oscar. Yeah, he's an amazing actor. I mean, for the, as for the message of the film, I mean, okay, um, I can sort of see that you know maybe some people might sort of take it the wrong yeah. way. But, but that, that, that's sometimes the thing about your work. Sometimes, the thing that sometimes you worry about is, you how know, sometimes, it, right? yeah, yeah, how it's interpreted. Because sometimes you don't mean these messages, but people misinterpret them or they take it completely Different. the yeah. wrong way from how you expect them. Because to everyone's mean. minds are like wired differently. Yep. Like yeah. Whatever you post out, like in mm-hmm. your poetry or like, let's say a playwright, you might intend it to be that to be way but like you know this. somebody else will always get offended or subjective interpretation yeah, yeah exactly. exactly yeah 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 so you so, can't really control that but mm-hmm. it's just uh how well you can i don't know segue yeah. minimize like, yeah yeah and minimize the the the, the, yeah. the risk i mean the i risk. guess the, the, the best way is always try to be as aware as possible you know how people are going to take yeah. it and all that sort of thing but sometimes it's very difficult la. sometimes you have no clue that you know you did you you know you put it out people are like oh like Exactly, because yeah. especially if you want to like talk about very very important issues and like mm-hmm. stuff that people just don't talk about, yeah, uh, yeah it is very very tricky because mm-hmm. like even now itself also like when we were talking about this like yeah, it's I so meta. We had to be like, yeah. kind of be aware yeah. of like what we were saying because it will affect like anyone that's watching. Yeah. Like I think a good example is like you know there was that show recently, a uh, Thirteen Reasons Why. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, Thirteen Reasons Did Why. You watch it? No. Yeah, so you know that's a show about teens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first season especially was yeah. about suicide and all that I, stuff. I didn't like the message it was. Saying. Yeah, exactly. So I think the film make the, when they made it, they thought what they were trying to do was to discourage yeah. suicide. But the thing is, the way it they was romanticize portrayed, suicide. Yeah, yeah. which the I the thing is, I don't think they really deliberately went out and said, "Hey, let's romanticize." But the way they did it, they didn't yeah. mean to, and it turned out, you know, some people. Were you know to get influence? To, yeah, yeah were, were in, I, I could never so, watch a movie like that. Like yeah. I'm already dealing with a lot of stuff. Like I could never <laughs> Internally, watch. Yeah, yeah you don't need any external conflict. Mm-hmm. Any extra external. That, that's why yeah. I didn't watch Joker. Like I I did watch a movie like yesterday. I watched Maleficent. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah, that's, 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 that's very really, like fantasy, like straightforward. You know, good versus evil. There's no like this moral gray area Actually, where you know, was, you're a villain but you're not really. But you're like kind of a villain. There was a lot of dark stuff in that movie yeah. also, lah. Yeah, yeah. And I also didn't like how like yeah. I, I'm sure a lot of people enjoyed it, but they were like also romanticizing yeah. villain or villainousness. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's why all these kind of movies coming out, right? Like yeah. Maleficent, Harley herself. Quinn. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's so, good to be bad nowadays. Yeah. It's like the villain. Yeah, so I mean the thing about the Joker is, I think you know if you really watch that movie, I don't you know I think you see that his actions are not a good thing. Basically, you know I mean in the end he gets locked up and all that. Yeah, yeah. Wait, that's oh my idea. god, spoiler. <laughs> Okay, no, I mean, okay, no, yeah, that's yeah. already known, like, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, being, yeah, yeah. Being locked up, he, but the he's thing is, some up. people are just going to see what he does and think, "Oh, that's cool. I'm just like him." And yeah, get you don't the get wrong the, impression. The, the underlying message. It is about people. mental health, isn't it? It is. Joker, it yeah. is definitely yeah. about mental health and how, uh, what leads up to all yeah. those actions, right? Mm-hmm. And if you don't spot them early, like, how is it going to be? You know, how is it going to grow into like this yeah, insane yeah. kind of person and whatever he is capable of doing? Yeah. So. Because sometimes yeah. the danger so is you put out a show and then maybe you have a message but people only take part of the message yeah. and they don't consider the whole thing you're trying yeah, to say. Yeah, because there's one very interesting thing that I kind of had a chat with Kyle. Uh, he's actually behind the camera right now. Hey, Kyle. So, <laughs> so uh, I know you, you said like the, the shows of being straightforward and being good and evil, yeah. right? And the moral grey area. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's not only like two shades because shoot it's grey itself is not only 50 but yeah. it's like oh I yeah. see what you did there <laughs> hey. it's not only 50 but it's like thousands it's the thousands of greys that you know mm-hmm. that could be in any direction you wouldn't know so I think this what these kind of confusing films like you know yeah. it's coming out recently 
uh, really challenges the the yeah. concept of actually good and evil. I mean, I mean, I see the I see the the the, the benefits of like you know doing all these um, moral equivocation uh, stuff. Like, yeah. Yeah, they're trying to um, challenge the norms and whatever. But for me personally, I, again, sorry. For me, for me personally, um, I try not to delve too much into yeah. the whole conflict thing because at the end of the day, I just like a happy ending. It's true. So it's true. I don't, I don't watch heavy drama. I don't like all this too much conflict. Like, yeah. girl, my life is already filled with conflict. <laughs> like, I don't need. Yeah, more. we don't need to see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the last really bad conflict, like. That uh, that a show gave me was Game of Thrones. Like oh, I yeah, I yeah. can't watch that. Oh boy, that, that one. Yeah. That destroyed yeah. me emotionally. That yeah. destroyed me too, but because the ending was yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but never mind. No more spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no no, no more spoilers. <laughs> it's yeah. been three months. We're yeah. okay with spoilers. Yeah, I think so. Spoilers. Oh, there's a there's a threshold. Like yeah, yeah there's is a time it, limit. Three months. I don't know how. Yeah, for is TV it, shows, is it three months? I think everybody knows about it, but okay. okay. I don't to be safe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know, for me, I like these greetings because I feel, you know, life is not yeah. always black and white. So, it is. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's more, for me, I guess I, I like to relate yeah. to stuff on screen and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, when I see characters doing morally great things, yep. you know, so I'm glad because, you know, I would never do something like that in real life, but, so I can see how they do it. You know, <laughs> in a yeah. way, I say, I, I, say I, I don't like moral grey areas, but actually Maleficent actually is one of those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was exactly, like thinking like, yeah. she was portrayed as a villain, but she ended up being the good guy. So, yeah, wow, is, uh, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> how, way to be Contra- ironic, <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm being ironic. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I think a lot of in the past people like that, you know, it's very clear he's the good guy, he's the bad guy. But I think as you know, it, as time human went on, it's, it's inevitable. Like yeah, people yeah. don't want the same old thing. They want yeah. to, yeah. 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 So it's now more interesting where you know, you know, it's good. You don't know bad. who the bad guys. Even Game of Thrones is like there's yeah. no villains and no heroes. Like, They're yeah. just players of the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, and that's life, right? Yeah, exactly. That's life. Life, life is a stage. <laughs> life yeah, is yeah. a stage. Yeah. yeah. Like for me, yeah, um, how do you say? I remember, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Yep. Yeah. So my favourite character like... for the longest time was Snape. Snape? Yeah. Because yeah. from oh the beginning gosh. until the end, until a very end, you never knew whether he was really good or bad. It's only at the end you finally realise how he was, but it made him very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And he's like super impactful, that character. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are running out of time. Oh, wow. So <laughs> I think we just close with like one final question, okay. uh, and then we'll just. You know, I don't come up with a second episode or something. (laughs) Okay, so, okay, the last question is pretty uh, heavy. So, suppressing negativity should never really be an option. So, what do you think should be done in Malaysia to really help self acceptance uh, and also basically a healthy mind? Hmm, find an outlet Uh, and a healthy outlet. Don't go killing people. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Like, don't start becoming Dexter or something. Um, So, yeah. Just find an outlet. I think the a creative outlet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, find a healthy outlet, and also I think um, be kind. I think that's so mm-hmm. very important. I think that you know sometimes, I think things are slightly better now, but there's still this this stigma about mental health and all that sort of it thing. Is. So it, it's a very, uh, ter- it's a very weird term that people don't really understand what it really means. It's just like mm-hmm. people just know it's important. Mental health is important. But they don't really know what yeah, what the extent yeah, and yeah. all that sort of thing. So if, if you know if you or you know somebody who is support suffering from you know don't yeah. don't put them down, don't belittle it. You know, be supportive. Listen. Be kind. Yeah, listen. Be friendly. And like, if you need to, you know, professional help that sort of thing, don't yeah. be afraid to. You know, I mean, like, people always assume that oh, if you go to therapy, you're some crazy. people say you're crazy, it's, but no. Yeah, it's totally no. not. I mean, if you were sick, if you had a cold, the natural thing is to see a doctor. So, if you're not feeling great mentally, the natural yeah. thing should be to see... A therapist. Yeah, so I think you should yeah. just be supportive and kind and yeah. end yeah. the stigma. La. I think I think also one of the problems is that, you know, in Malaysia, I don't want to put down put on my own race, but the most prejudice and, and um, judgment that I've gotten was from Malays. Like, mm. I have many supportive Chinese and Indian friends, but like the Malays, like they don't know what the hell mental health is. Like, they will like they don't but either they won't they don't believe that you have depression or that you you're supposed to pray away your demons or something like that. So it's not a very healthy. The the foundation is not there. Like 
no matter how much we try to create awareness about mm. mental health, as the, the majority is like still largely ignorant about the issue. So Yeah, that's why we have this podcast, yeah. Back Wings <laughs> Podcast. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Terence and Zach, for joining me. Thank uh, you for thank having, you having yeah, us. Thank it was you. so fun and I truly, truly appreciate the conversations that we had. Uh, they have so much depth and I really, uh, uh, hopefully we can have another session, yes. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something today or I don't know if you want to join uh, for the next podcast. If you really are dying to say something uh, to the public about your ideas and, and stuff like that, you can just contact me uh, there. <laughs> You'll be edited in post later. <laughs> so, uh, see ya. Yeah. Till next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.